Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to Trini Bone American Made. And today I'm going to do um, this spe special bread recipe for one of my subscribers. Um, so I have already uploaded um, some bread recipes which people love. Um, but this bre that bread is like a soft to touch bread if you know understand what i'm saying um and this bread is more um on the italian side where it's going to be like a a hard crust you know soft on the inside sort of feel all right and this is the artisan bread so who knows it knows it who don't don't all right so i'm going to show you guys this recipe as I learned from um, someone in my church and um, I got a, a recipe from them and I've stuck with it so I'm gonna share it with you guys um, and well it's not the exact recipe but it's it's uh, my version of it okay so stay tuned so What we have here is um, four cups of warm water, salt, yeast, and flour, about eight cups of flour. All right. So because I'm not a recipe chef, I had to write it down for you guys. Trust me. And um, just to be sure that I get this thing the right way and you all get it the right way too also. So, my rule of thumb is that for every one cup of flour, you're going to need one teaspoon of yeast and the same portion in salt. Okay? So, one cup of flour, one teaspoon of yeast, one teaspoon of salt. And for every two cups of flour, you're going to use one cup of water. Or milk if you was making regular bread you do milk all right but this one you just use in water because you want the crust to be hard and you know that kind of uh, French bread kind of finish okay so let me just show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make sure I have one cup for every um, one teaspoon for every cup and I'm just putting it in this container because it's easier to store it if you have anything else and you just want to uh, you able to cover it down it'll be good so i have eight cups of flour so i want eight teaspoons of salt of one two three four five i'm short on some salt Six. We get two more teaspoons for you guys. Seven. Eight. Good. That's the salt. nice now to that I want to add in the yeast and same as well you're gonna put in eight teaspoons of yeast now generally being a chef you don't mix salt and yeast together right I'm just because they say that kills the um, yeast activity but this is the way I learned to do the dough all right so I'm just following to suit it always comes out good so i'm sharing it i don't know why it didn't um retard the yeast but it didn't and i'm using um instant yeast you could use dry active yeast if you want but uh, you know instant yeast is better so one two three four five six 
seven, eight. So that's it there. Eight teaspoons of yeast. And as I said, for every two cups of flour, you're gonna use one cup of water. So we have eight cups of flour, so we're gonna need four cups of water. And the water is uh, warm water. I could actually hold, hold it and touch it, and it's in, a, it's in a pirate glass, so it's not that hot. All right, so pour that over there. I have this wooden stick because today I'm a bit lazy. I don't feel like um, mixing by hand, I'm putting my hand in there yet. So, just mix this up in the water. And I'm, I'm going to add the flour now, right into here. Everything is mixed in here. So, one. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven, see I had to measure this out because this person tell me you need to measure I need to know exact recipe exact and I'm not like an exact exact chef I try to tell you guys you know be your own chef Okay, so this is eight cups. All right, this is eight cups. And I'm just gonna stir it in, mix it up. And this is especially easier for people who don't like to put their hands in flour. I'll wash my hands a bit. The people who don't like to put their hands in flour get you a stick like this it's gonna be very useful you could knead all the way all right let me show you guys what it looks like you're seeing so don't mind if it looks scary if it looks uh, wetty it's it's no uh, worries the recipe isn't going the wrong way that's exactly how it's supposed to be this stick is trying to force my nerves to put my hand in here I really I'm really tired today guys tired tired today's Easter Sunday so I cooked me up such a big meal I didn't rest the night before that's the problem so I was so tired. So I'm just not in the mood to knead this by hand. And it's so stubborn to move. I guess I'm going to have to do use my hands. Okay. I don't seem so. I'm getting through. Where there's a will, there's a, a way. Alright. So once you mix all the flour in, like that, and there's no clumps of... Uh, raw flour in there. It's all moist. Then you could take this and cover it down So You'll see what it dough looks like Everything is mixed up mixed in I'm just gonna Leave this now cover it down and leave it to raise When you cover it Try to leave a little Air pocket. Leave it on your counter there or in a dark corner for about two to three hours or, or less. It could be about two and a half hours. And when you come back, it will be a whole bubbly madness. 
that's when you know it's good to use and you're ready to go with it you could put it in the fridge um if you're not gonna like me i don't know depends on if i feel tired or not i may just put this in the fridge and restart this video tomorrow so it kind of slows the um rate of how the, the yeast grows um which is probably even better um because the idea of it i think is it, you know you you want like a sourdough kind of finish as being a chef and you're learning a certain things this is kind of like the sourdough process you leave this and you can add this to other doughs to start your dough um i'm not gonna do that this is just as fresh as it comes so yeah leave this for two hours and then we'll be back to uh to do the rest of this video guys so it's been two hours later and my little fast daughter go on and open it up to eat the flour but it was you know coming all the way to the top as you could see the dough was you know all the way up here and coming out of the bucket and that's exactly what you want so you know it's like really um like double in the yield and from here you want to portion it out so all i did is just butter these so i like the um base of my bread to be crunchy so technique i've learned from work is to put some cornmeal down um on your pan so that is just to make it crunchy some cornmeal down some in here also so you have a crunchy bottom and you have a crunchy um top also okay so all i'm gonna do is just punch this down just dust my hand it's a little bit of flour yeah guys i didn't want to be any flour but you know i have no choice all right so i'm punching it down and then i'm just going to um pinch off what i want to use Okay, so now I just have a rough bowl here. Can make it bigger, and I'm just gonna score it to make it look like um, Italian bread. Really, really rough. Nothing um too fancy or special. <clears throat> and that's it. Put it in the oven for um 30 minutes on a 400 degree 450 degree fahrenheit um and also i put a water bath at the bottom shelf you know in all my videos you'll see i put a water bath in the bottom of the shelf to be able to help it steam and raise properly so may i, I may add some little decorations to this but i'll show you all when i'm finished okay so this is the two um uh long artisan breads i'm making and then this is one by itself here okay um which is a plain bread this one has uh sesame seeds and this one have like garlic um herbs all right so i'm gonna pop it in the oven now and i'll show you the finished product hey guys so the bread is out of the oven and it looks great i'll show you all the next one yummy bread guys look at this bread we already tasted peace listen to it
Yeah. All right. Thank you.